didn't have time to focus on it. And then I got furloughed, like everybody else. Yeah. And then I really had energy and time to put into this, and it's blossomed, and I'm really, really happy about it. So. Tell them, because this is not like your normal thing. I, I really love the customization part of what you're doing. Yes. Explain to them how your school works. Yes, so I create customized menus for each student that reaches out for a class. So if they want to focus on a technique or a cuisine, I teach them how to make that based on their dietary needs and restrictions. So it's tailored per student, and it's really unique and special because it really has them branch out and create something new. And there's two different ways you can teach them, right? Yes, virtually in wherever you are. And then if and that's the whole world. The whole world. Yeah. I'll wake up at 6 a.m. to do it. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. And then it's in person in the greater Denver area. So I, the great thing is I come to your home. It's in your kitchen using your own yeah. equipment, everything. So yeah, instead of coming going to a cooking school where they have all this professional stuff and then trying to replicate it at home. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, what do you charge for this? So for one to two people virtually, it's 200. Um, and then it's it decreases as the group gets bigger. Yeah. And then in person, it's 250 because I actually have to go to the home. And then it decreases as the group gets bigger. There's a lot more to it, though, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Tell me recipe cards, right? Yeah. So it, There's you know, a lot of work that goes into what you do. A lot of prep. Uh, so yeah. it's definitely a lot of bang for your buck. You know, I come in ahead of time. We have a consultation. We go over your go-to. So I stay away from those and really get you to explore and, and try something new. Yeah. And then I have a shopping equipment list that I send out prior to the event date so that you can have time to get everything ready. And then I have a, I generate a recipe card so that you can have it forever and then you can print it out and have it for the class or whatever you want. But it's nice because I, I'm teaching you something you can use for a lifetime. Now, I know it seems hard to believe, but I've actually never poached an egg in my life. I don't know why, but so you're going to teach me how to poach an egg. I am. Oh, so what I did is I made these little bellini, um, basically with a foundation is a bellini. And Which is a pancake, basically. It's like right? a pancake. Yeah. yeah. And then I Fancy. made a homemade tzatziki sauce with some shallots in there, some cucumber, plain yogurt, white pepper, garlic, lemon. You getting that? Yeah. Um, and then there's a lox. Um, and then cherry tomatoes, and then the egg. So it's a fun go-to brunch breakfast dish that I eat all the time. Okay. So it's great. And then and the egg. And the <laughs> egg. So when you poach an egg, it can be a little tricky. So you okay. want the you want to put white vinegar in yep. your water. It helps that. emulsify. An egg. Just a splash. A few splashes, okay. just to keep the egg white together. Um, you can use a chopstick or a butter knife or any kind of stick to use as a whirlpool because you're going to start stirring okay. like in a little circle until it really becomes, you know, just a go thing. And then I have a little slotted spoon so you can take out the egg, okay. a fork to eat the food. Okay. Yes. Just drop it in? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you take the stick. And? And you put it in the water. Fat side. Thank you. And then you stir, stir, stir until it becomes like a little whirlpool, but with, with grace and ease. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you there we go. We, we got time go. constraints here. With your left hand, grab that ramekin, uh -huh. and then after that starts to really go, you take the, the stick out and slowly pour the egg right in the middle of that. Pour it all the way. You said slow. All the way, all the way, all the way. You said slow, didn't she? <laughs> Now I it's ruined good. it already. It's she okay. Quick, Clary. It's okay. We can do another one. <laughs> can we? I already yeah, screwed I, that I, up. I have another egg. It's cool. <laughs> no, but it's going. It's like on a low simmer, so you don't want to have your water too hot. It boils it and it kind of shreds it apart. I was never a good student. <laughs> Truthfully. The good thing is during my class, if someone does botch something, we can absolutely do a redo. Yeah, our classes take, or my classes take around two hours, two and a half hours, depending on what we're making, so. How long does it take to poach, and when do you know three it's done? Three eight, or three minutes. Okay. Yes, it's uh, been about 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, we're not yeah. doing another one, we don't have time for another one. We'll it's make okay. this one work. It's all right, you it know. It still tastes good. It's cool, I mean, it does break apart anyway. Okay. Um, so you're going to see little bits and pieces. Sometimes people take a little, like, sifter strainer, 
and set it on top of the ramekin and crack the egg on top and then all the little bits and pieces that you see in the water fall through that and then they just dump that in. So at my restaurant where you just crack it and put it right in? Yeah, you can. You can absolutely do it. There's a lot of different ways to do okay. it, but this is kind of the way that I do it. Um, mm -hmm. What's your website? It's inyourkitchen5280.com. Okay. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> okay, while this is going, yeah. with the tzatziki oh, right. sauce, there yeah, yeah, we're not done here. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, put the tzatziki sauce on there, just a nice little coat. Okay, perfect. That's reasonable? It's great. Okay. You're doing great. No, I'm not. <laughs> then you do like one or two pieces of lox on top. There you go. Depends on how much fish you like to you eat. You know I like my lox. There you go. <laughs> And then you're going to do a little layer of the grape tomatoes on that. Spanish, any specific? Whatever you eat, nice and pretty. Oh, yeah. There you go. Perfect. It's like he's done this before. <laughs> it really hasn't. <laughs> That's beautiful. You're doing great. Perfect. Okay. All right. And now the egg is almost done. <laughs> how, how do you know when it's done? How can you tell when it's done? I mean, you kind of, you have to push it. It's like, a, it's a texture you thing. You, you push can't it? do it yet. I mean, you take the spoon. Take it out. You scoop it out, you kind of go, mm -mm. Or, or you just set a time for three minutes and it's perfect? I usually do a three minute timer. And it's, it's perfect it's every time? It's usually perfect with the whites cooked thoroughly through and everything. But since the egg is a little bit separated because you didn't pour it all in like you should have. <laughs> she said slow. <laughs> Right? That's slow. It is okay. I it's should have okay. just dumped it in, shouldn't I? This is practice. All right. This is practice. You're going to be a professional in no time, I promise. Yeah. It's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> what um, else do you want to know? Oh, what else do you want to tell them? <laughs> um, well, what, kind of, what kind of stuff do you taught people? What kind of foods? Give them examples. It's anything from around the world. I've done a lot of traveling growing up. so. I've lived in France when I was little for a few years, lived in Japan for okay, a few years. Okay, so what years. kind of French food do you teach people? Anything they want. It's really anything. It's like the world is your oyster. So give us an idea of the last thing you taught. Um, so I did roasted Roma stuffed, or stuffed roasted Roma tomatoes with shrimp and feta and herbs and garlic. Okay. And then I did a pancetta scallop piccata um it was like the lemon butter sauce that's where i taught how to flambe okay and then we did like an orzo pasta with zucchini that we you know threw into the pancetta grease so it's nice and coated and then we add spinach to it damn it i was... wish we were making that today <laughs> <laughs> that sounds freaking next delicious. time i don't know if we have enough time isn't it's like a 10 apparently we don't have enough time to eat today <laughs> so i screwed that put up you, put the spoon in the thing yeah. <laughs> all right yeah you just get all that goodness I think it looks about ready to me, honestly. All right, and you're going to kind of shake that off a little bit. I have this little, little napkin. You put can it on see, it. Yeah, you can put it on there. That's fine. So okay. you're really blotting out that moisture, yeah, right? Because the water is not going to add to the flavor of this dish. No, at all. It, it won't. And I'm just kind of taking the water off a little bit. All right, now go ahead with this fork. You can just place it on top. Really? Yep. No more slaw spoon. Try not to poke, poke the hole in it. Not the most beautiful post egg I've ever seen, but you know, it's fine. All right, oh. and there it is. And then you can eat it. <laughs> All right, give me your website again. In and your it, kitchen, 52 Is that where you want people to contact you? I would love that. You don't want them calling you, you don't want them on you Instagram. You can call me night or day. Give me your Instagram too. It's in your kitchen, 5280 also. Okay. Please, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Well, this looks all right. It's yummy. It's going to be good. <laughs> uh, we'll see you today at 11.30 when we got my friend Max coming in from Max Market. He's got a little market downtown by uh, Coors Field. Let's eat. Oh, hot. Oh, uh, hot. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Thanks. <laughs> it really is. All homemade.